today we're going to be taking you on a tour of Covent Garden. I can never say that word. Covent. Covent. Covent Garden. Covent Garden. The so Covent Garden is right next to Leicester Square in the heart of London and this area is known for its cool chic shops and restaurants. They also have lots of different plays going on so this is kind of the theatre district as well. The first thing that we're going to explore is the Covent Garden Infinity Chamber. Yeah. It's right across from us. It looks like a tunnel with some colourful lights so come on let's it's, go. It's sponsored by Frozen so uh, might cool us down a little bit on this very hot London day. There are a lot of people here we just have to make a dash for it. Let's go! Truthfully, I have to say that tunnel looked way cooler online than it did in real life. It was all right. Nothing, nothing to write home about. However, on the other side of that tunnel is an absolutely gorgeous part of Covent Garden. And yeah, I think this might be one of the prettiest parts of London. Now we are on Floral Street and we are going to make our way to Benito's to have some lunch. We are now at Benito's and it is Mexican food. So we've gone for the lunch meal and it includes a burrito, some chips and a drink. And for our drink, Ali's brother just introduced us to Tink. It's sparkling grapefruit. I actually really like this so I'm excited that they have it. All right, inside of our burrito, we went with the braised beef, lots of cheese, black beans, some lettuce, and some sour cream. And on the side, we got some spicy sauce. Not for me. Is this even? Let's have a taste test. I am actually starving. That is very well seasoned. The beans are, I have to say the beans are my favorite. Mm. They've got so much flavor. Braised beef is extremely soft. It just breaks apart. So good. I think I have to agree with Ali. You definitely taste the beans more than anything. I don't know about the beef. It's a bit, it's a bit bland. The beans make up for it. It's a Jamaican tang. It's really good. <laughs> it's kind of like 7 Up or Sprite but with a grapefruit flavor to it. The first stop at Benito's was pretty good. Now we're gonna wander around the streets of Covent Garden and make our way to the Jubilee Market. Covent Garden. I can't say it. The streets in Covent Garden are so cute. So we're having a lot of fun just wandering around. The one that we're on right now is called Maiden Lane. And we are slowly making our way to the Jubilee Market. Right across from the market is Milk Train. And since we just had lunch, I think it is the perfect time for some dessert. Milk Train is famous for their candy floss, so you can get an ice cream cone and then you can get some candy floss or like I say, cotton candy around it. Tough choice, so it's at the movies or cookies and dreams. Okay, so we got the at the movies and it is caramel flavored with popcorn and everything and we also got the extra option of the candy floss. Truthfully, the candy floss looks a lot more Instagrammable than it is in real life to manage because the ice cream is melting. Mmm, it's so good. Candy floss is kind of acting as like a little a barrier to catch the ice cream that's dripping because it's so hot outside. This is such a mess. <laughs> Popcorn is just popping off. It's dripping all over the place. It looked like a way better idea than it is. But it tastes good. After some struggle and a fair few wet wipes, we have finished the ice cream and washed our hands. <laughs> I felt like a little kid. I had ice cream dripping all down my arm. It was all over our faces. It's a messy affair. Now we go. we're gonna go check out Jubilee Market. It is right in the heart of Covent Garden. Right now we're just strolling through Jubilee Market. Seems like it's got a lot of knickknacks, souvenirs, clothes. We're leaving the Jubilee Market Hall and we're going to be making our way to the Covent Garden Piazza. The Covent Garden area used to be a fruit and vegetable market. Now they have transformed it into an entire area filled with shops, pubs, markets. Any and everything that you could want is in this area. It's pretty crazy but at the market that we just were, they get over 40 million people visiting annually, which is insane. This part of Covent Garden is two covered halls 
So there's the South Hall and then there's the North Hall. Both halls have an assortment of different restaurants and shops. It's really very pretty on the inside. Between the two halls is an exhibition where they've got different costumes of all the plays that they show near here. So they've got some from The Lion King, Mary Poppins and Frozen. Now we've made it to the Northern Hall and this is also called the Apple Market. Getting some AC from uh, Dior. <laughs> Pretty much all that we can afford. <laughs> the AC. Alright, we hear some commotion happening at this end of the market. So we're going to go check out the street performers that are performing in the piazza. We're also walking straight to the shaded section. Step, everyone. Down the step! Down the step! Oh me! Yeah, you! Sorry. We have made our way across Covent Garden Square. We are now on the northern side of Apple Market and we're going to be walking down James Street. James Street is one of the main streets that takes you all the way to Covent Garden. And just like in Covent Garden, James Street is filled with performers, so it's a pretty lively, active area. And it's on James Street that has one of Covent Garden's most iconic buildings, the White Lion. The White Lion is a pub that was opened in 1888. In fact, it was rebuilt in 1888, so it's much older than that. And right across the street from the White Lion is Ali and Chloe's nickname for me, the Nags Head. <laughs> now we're heading down Floral Street and we're making our way slightly outside of Covent Garden to go see the Royal Opera House and the Ballerina Statue. The red telephone booths that are by the Dancer Statue are so well preserved. They're some of the best ones in the city. The last place we're going to check out is in the northernmost part of Covent Garden and it's called Neil's Yard. Alright, we've made it to our last market in Covent Garden and this is called Seven Dials Market. The reason why it's called Seven Dials is because there are seven roads that lead all the way to the roundabout, hence the name Seven Dials. This is a newly converted food hall and it has a bunch of different foods. You can get burgers, pizzas, Thai food, donuts. But we decided to go for the truffle burger and um, let's start. So the burger came to £10, which is the fair price for London. That's a good burger. What did you get on it? They put this sauce, it's a yellow sauce, it's like a light mustard. I don't know which part was better, the truffle fries or the burger. Both were really good. Definitely come visit Truffle Burger if you're in Seven Dials Market. Our last stop of the day is Neil's Yard and this is just another collection of shops. The buildings are brightly colored and it's a really beautiful part of Corbin Garden, arguably the prettiest part. Just come down this tiny little alleyway and we're now in Neil's Yard. I was not expecting it to be so cute. This has got to be the cutest place we've been all day. Also in Neil's Yard is Home Slice. It's a pizza place. We don't have any more room for food, but I've heard it's got some of the best pizza in London. So check it out if you're in Neil's Yard. And just like that, it concludes our time at one of my favorite spots in London, Covent Garden.